Homework time. All right, let's do it. Here we are on lesson five, the final lesson of the ever so brief module two. Let's start by jotting her name down on the top. Here's the deal. I'll put my name, you put yours. And then, because a thing that's worth doing is worth doing right, let's jot down the date. I will write the bland today. You write the actual date where and when you are. And our ingredients, our recipe, our destructions here are model each problem with a tape diagram. Okay, we know how to do that. Solve an answer with a statement. Okay, so we're going to read, we're going to draw, and then we'll do the writing, which consists of two parts, the math and the written statement. We can do this. We've done this plenty of times. So, <clears throat> first example here, the capacity, how much it'll hold, of Jose's vase. So, how much will Jose's vase hold? Okay, we're talking about the capacity, is 2,419 milliliters of water. He poured one liter, 299 milliliters of water into the empty vase. Then he added 398 milliliters. How much more water will the vase hold? Okay, now, quick little note here. If you see how much more and you say, oh, that means we're comparing, you are not a robot, my little friend. You are a thinking, breathing human being. We have to think. You can't just see, for example, uh, when you see... Uh, in all, you might have even been told this, that when you see in all, that means you're definitely going to add. No, not necessarily. Maybe sometimes, maybe even most of the time, the words in all are a cue, or perhaps better said, a clue that you might need to add. But it doesn't mean always. And same thing here. We're not actually comparing two different things, are we? We have the vase, put in some water, put in some more water. We're saying how much more? You know, how much is left of that capacity? Uh, we're not saying how much more is this than that. So there's no comparison here. And I'm stressing this because we are to draw one tape here to make this work. Could we draw more than one? Sure, but it's going to be best to draw just one. And even though we have one, I'm still going to label it V for vase just to keep in good habits. And here's the vase. It's lying on its side, or maybe it's just a very long, shallow vase. That's the whole thing there. And if you say vase, that's right, too. I don't know. I'm just being snooty and saying falls. Okay, so uh, it holds. The whole thing is 2,419 milliliters. Okay, and make sure that's a capital L on milliliters. So that's the whole thing. What does he pour in there? I mean, in, in this case, we can the, the tape diagram is practically a physical representation of what's happening here. So I'm pouring in some water. Okay, and I could see, I can, I can kind of estimate, and we're talking about about half, maybe a little more than half of the capacity there. So I'll say, yeah, this much here is the water he's poured in. Maybe if I were really bored, I'd get out the colored pencils and shade that in a nice light blue to represent water. Don't do that. It's a waste of time. All right, one liter, and you see why we use a capital L there for liters? Otherwise, it would look like 11. 299 milliliters. So that's how much water he pours into the empty vase. Then he adds some more. 398 milliliters. Okay, so we'll call this 398. There's a little bow tie for it. 398 milliliters. And how much more water? Now, isn't this a beautiful tape diagram? Because it shows you exactly what's going on and what you need to solve and how to solve it. It does not tell you why. I don't know why Jose needs to know this. But anyway, we'll help him out because he's a good friend. So uh, this is what we're trying to solve for, with the, the excess capacity here, how much more water it will hold. So let's call that W for water. That's our unknown we're looking to solve for. So we can see from the diagram, oh, okay. Well, I need to figure out how much water is here in all, wink, wink. And then I can figure out the difference between how much total water is in there at this point and the excess capacity, how much more empty space there is. So I can start by putting these two together, but ah, uh, I see there, we have mixed units here and I have milliliters here, 
couple ways I can handle that. Let's use our simplifying strategy and say one liter is 1,000 milliliters, and we have these 299 milliliters. All right, and we're going to add to that the 398. See how the bracket shows you? Hey, we're putting these two together. 398 milliliters. We'll put these two together and we'll see how much the two of them are, how much water is in their total so far. Nine and eight make 17. Regroup that one. One and nine are 10. Nine more makes 19. One and two and three. Got it, six. And I'm adding nothing to the one, so it's one. 1,697 milliliters. Now, since I'm not done yet, I'm just going to leave it like that um, because I do notice, by the way, that my total capacity here is also expressed in a, the smallest unit in milliliters. So if I take the total capacity, subtract the amount of water that's in there, it will give me the uh, empty portion, how much more water it will hold. So I'll take the 2,000 419 milliliters, the whole capacity. And if I subtract from that how much water is in there, 1,697 milliliters. Yeah. Okay, now this will tell me how much space remains in the vase. So 9 minus 7 leaves a 2. Oh, uh, yeah, I got to regroup here. I can't take 9 from 1, so. We'll go over to the hundreds. I will leave three of those hundreds as they are. Bring 100 over as 10 tens, joined with the one ten that's already there in the tens place. So that's 11 tens. And I'm subtracting nine tens from it, leaving two tens. And then now looking in the hundreds place, I have three minus six. So I will decompose the thousands, leave 1,000 where it is. And the other thousand, I will decompose as ten hundreds, joined with the three hundreds already present in the hundreds place. Thirteen hundreds minus six hundreds leaves. <gasps> seven hundreds, great, seven. And one minus one we know is zero, and I don't need to write that. So 722 milliliters. And does the answer make sense? Yeah, this is like 13 plus... 1,300 plus 400 is 1,700. Difference between 2,400 and 1,700 is about 700. Oh, and that's, that's right where I am. Okay, so a quick estimate, you see, even just mentally will confirm the uh, accuracy of your answer. So how much more water would a vase hose the, the, the vase? I'll tell you, I'll say, I'll say the vase, the vase will hold 722 milliliters more water. Good enough, right? All right, we read, we drew, we solved, we wrote, we conquered. Let's go on to number two. And here in number two, you suddenly realize, oh my goodness, this homework is entirely word problems. That's right, we've learned what to do here, metric conversions, now we're putting it to use. So Eric, this guy Eric, hopped on his bike one day, and he biked one kilometer, 125 meters, on Monday. Then, on Tuesday, he biked 375 meters less than on Monday. Question being, how far did he bike both days? Now here, do we have a comparison? Yes, we have Mondays and we're saying Tuesday is this much less than Mondays. We are comparing the two days. We need two separate tapes for them. All right, so let's draw Monday. Whoa, where am I? Okay, Monday. And we'll draw yay about much for Monday. And we know the exact amount of Monday, right? They just tell us it's one kilometer, 125 meters. Tuesday, however, is, is it more or less than Monday? 
Okay, it's, it's less, okay? Always good just to take a moment and make sure you got that right. Sometimes it can be a little confuddling. So uh, Tuesday is going to be somewhat less than Monday. I don't know, about that much maybe? Sure, fine. And now we don't know how much Tuesday is, right? We just know how much less it is. So what we know is this amount here. And if you like, you can clarify this by putting a little diddly doddly line there. And that is 375 meters is the difference between the two days. Okay, so now though, uh, 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 what's our question? How far did he bike both days? So we need to know the two of them together. And we'll call that unknown, that variable B for bike. So now, in order to put the two of them together, I have to know what Tuesday's actual is, right? And to find Tuesdays, well, I know it's this much less than Monday, which is that much. And I think, again, I'll use that simplifying strategy. It's my preference, as you see. So to solve for Tuesday, I can take Mondays, so one kilometer, is how many meters? Yeah, I gave it away, 1,000, and then 125 meters, so that's Monday, expressed in the simplest unit as meters. And then if I subtract the difference there, the 375 meters, and I see I got some regrouping steam rolling towards me here, that will give me Tuesdays, so I can combine it with Mondays to solve for B. All right, so uh, 5 minus 5 leaves 0. Good. And I can't take 7 from 2 without some decomposition action. I will leave 0 in the hundreds place. Bring it over as 10 tens to the tens place, joined with the two tens already there. So now I have 12 tens minus 7 tens leaves 5 tens. I cannot take 3 from 0. But remember my little thing there? Look, that's 10 minus 3 is 7. Okay, if you want here, uh, we'll do it the long way. Fine, fine. All right, so I'll take the 1,000, leave zero thousands there, bring it over as 10 hundreds, and look, voila, I'm still doing 10 minus 3 is 7, yes. And so 750 meters. That's my value for Tuesday. I'm going to write it. I'm just going to take note of that. It's a good practice. I'll write it right inside the tape here. So I realize that just that tape is Tuesday's value. Now, if I put Monday and Tuesday together, I will get B, -b, -b how much he biked on both days, both bike. Uh, so uh, again, I already know how to, I already wrote um, Mondays, but let's do it. Let's do it with the standard algorithm instead. So one kilometer, 125 meters, and that's Monday. Add to it Tuesdays, 750 meters, okay. And that will give me the two days together, my value for the <clears throat> unknown variable B. So, M plus M, no, just kidding. Uh, 5 plus 0 is, yes, 5. 2 and 5 make 7. 1 and 7, 8. And then I have this one kilometer over here, all by its lonesome, poor little fella, 875 meters. Now, if I had a value in the thousands here in meters, I would have to, yes, convert that over to meters, uh, to kilometers, rather. So if there were something in the thousands here, if I had a thousand meters, I would have to convert that to kilometers for this answer to make sense. Um, but it's good just the way it is, and I kind of saw that coming. Wink, wink. So, uh, how far did he bike both days? So, uh, he biked, we'll write our statement. Good job, Eric, by the way, keep it healthy. He biked one kilometer, 875 meters um, on both days, and just to be Specific, I'll just, uh, you know, together, I'll, I'll add the word together. Just so it doesn't seem like he did that much on each day, which is not the case. He biked one kilometer, 875 meters on both days together. Lovely, beautiful, wonderful. Let's rock on to number three. And in number three, we get a little personal, folks, with uh, Zachary, Gabe, and Harry talking about how much the boys weigh. So let's do it. 
Zachary weighs 37 kilograms, 95 grams, okay. Gabe weighs 4,650 grams less than Zachary, right? Harry weighs 2,905 grams less than Gabe. All right, so we have three guys, their comparative weights, and the question then is how much does Harry weigh? So we're just trying to solve for Harry here. And, and as I said, comparative, we know we need separate tapes for each boy. They're not all joined together in some way. We're comparing Gabe to Zachary and then Harry to Gabe. So let's draw each boy out here. We'll start with Z for Zachary. And we know him exactly. And I'll just draw out, pull out an amount of tape from my tape dispenser. All right, and him we know exactly his whole weight, so that's why my bracket encompasses the whole tape. 37 kilograms, 95 grams. Now, Gabe's is comparative. I know it's less than Zachary. I really might not have a sense yet of how much less, but that's cool, yo. Gabe is going to be less than Zachary. And so I'm just drawing it less. I don't know if this is proportional at all, but hey. All right, and so what I know here is the difference between them is 4,650 grams less than Zachary. Okay, good. Now let's get on to Harold, Prince Harry here. He is less than Gabe, so I'll draw him a little shorter than Gabe. All right, so here's Harry, and I can see, okay, there's the end of Gabe, so, and I could do the dotted line down. I don't feel like it, and it's not necessary. Uh, so he's 2,905 grams less than Gabe. So uh, the question is to find H. That's what I'm trying to find. How much does Harry weigh? Well, in order to find Harry, I obviously need to first find Gabe to see how much uh, Harry is. So I need to start off with Zachary. Now, since two of my numbers are in the smallest unit in grams, and one of them only is in mixed units and kilograms and grams, I'm going to use my simplifying strategy and convert the kilograms and grams to straight grams so I can work with these numbers. Um, and then when I'm done, I can convert it back to mixed units, which is easy. All right, so 37 kilograms, well, if one kilogram is 1,000 grams, and two kilograms is 2,000 grams, 37 kilograms is 37,000 grams. So I write 37 thousands my comma right and I have 95 grams as well what's in the hundreds yes zero okay good we have no hundreds. 37,095 and that's grams and this is Zachary and then if we subtract the difference here we will figure out how much Gabe is so we can then calculate Harry so the difference between Zachary and Gabe is 4,650 grams, and that will give me Gabe. You like how I'm winding it up there, too? Nice. Five minus zero leaves five. Nine minus five? Four. Oh, and here comes the regrouping monster. So, well, we can't take six from zero. We go to the thousands place. Decompose it. Leave six of those thousands there. Bring a thousand over as ten hundreds. There are zero hundreds there, so it's just ten hundreds. Minus six hundreds now leaves four hundreds. And six minus four in the thousands place is two. Drop that comma. And we're subtracting nothing from the three, so three it remains. And this makes sense, right? 37 minus four, okay, yep, this, this checks out. Or I say 37 minus thousand minus five thousand would be my rough estimate. Okay, so this is Gabriel, Gabe. 
And now we know the difference between Gabe and Harold. And so if we subtract that difference, we will find Harry's actual weight. We see how that works? We know the difference between them. So let's go ahead and subtract the difference between them, that 2,905 good, good, good grams. 5 minus 5 is 0. 4 minus 0 leaves 4. Okay. Ah, can't take 9 from 4, so we go over to the thousands place. Leave 1,000 there. Bring it over as 10 hundreds with the 4 already present. All right, it's a little squished there, but you can see it. 14 minus 9 now is 5. Lovely. Ah, I can't take 1 from 2, but look, remember I've showed you this. Look, 31, because we're at the highest place. 31 minus 2 is 29, right? There we go. 29,540 grams. Now that is my value for Harold Ski here. So I'll write it over now that I know it. You know, and I don't have to do this, but it's good to. It helps me see it. Because when I write my statement, I want to convert this into kilograms and grams because that's how I was given uh, Zachary's weight at the beginning. Uh, in fact, let's just do that now. Let's say that is equal to, well, 29,000 grams is 29,000 grams kilograms. Okay, kilo means thousand, right? So 29 kilograms and then 540 grams is simply 540 grams. Lovely. All right, so how much does Harry weigh? Here's my statement. Simply, Prince Harry weighs 29 kilograms, 540 grams, period. And let's go on to number four. And here in number four, we go dog crazy. Somebody who works for Eureka has dogs. A Springer Spaniel weighs a 20 kilograms, 490 grams. A Cocker Spaniel weighs 7,590 grams less than a Springer Spaniel. A Newfoundland, these are big dogs, yo. A Newfoundland weighs 52 kilograms, 656 grams more than a Cocker Spaniel. Okay, so we have three dogs and we have comparative weights. So let's just absorb that for a moment because we have a complicated question as well. So, okay, we got three dogs, three different weights. We're comparing the weights on two of them. Okay, all right, let's move on. What is the difference in grams between the weights of the Newfoundland and the Springer Spaniel? Ooh, so now we really have to think a little bit here. So let's use S for Springer and draw that tape. Here's our Springer. Now, and we're starting there, not just because it comes first, because we're given that one straight out, we know exactly what it is, okay? So he is zippity-doo-dah. Now I'm gonna put the bracket over the whole tape because we know the whole amount here is 20 kilograms, 490 grams. So now this Cocker Spaniel is less than the Springer Spaniel. So when I go to draw him, and we'll designate him C, uh, he is going to be less. So draw him a little bit less. And so my bracket is not on his weight, but the difference between the two. Okay, so the difference between the two, I've pegged at 7,590 grams. Now the Newfoundland, Ooh, far above the Cocker Spaniel. So uh, we'll call him N, of course, and I would probably have to draw the tape all the way across the paper, but I'm not gonna do that. I am gonna make it significantly longer so I know that I'm expecting a larger number here. Okay, and what I know here is the difference between the Newfoundland and the Cocker Spaniel, okay? So if I were to uh, draw a bracket for that amount, it's gonna go from here. So I'm gonna use a little dotted line. So here's the Cocker Spaniel, and I don't know how much he is. But what I know is this. 
You see, I know how much more the Newfoundland is than the Cocker Spaniel. So that difference, a Newfoundland weighs 52 kilograms, 656 grams more than a Cocker Spaniel. All right, so this one is a little tricky. So uh, glad we're doing it together. 656 grams. But wait, the trickiness is not over. What is the difference in grams, we're asked, between the weight of the Newfoundland and the Springer Spaniel? Okay, so the Springer I actually know, but I'm, at, I'm being asked what's the difference between here and here? All right, so this is my unknown. This is what I'm trying to solve for, the difference between the Springer and the Cocker Spaniel. That is, and let's call it, I don't know, D, because we're trying to find the difference there. Doesn't matter what we call it, really. And I'm going to do another da -da -da dotted line here. So I see, okay, I'm trying to find this. That's kind of a complicated tape, but when you look at it, the beauty of these tapes, even when they are complicated, is that they show us exactly what we know, what we don't know, and what we're trying to find, and beautifully how to find it. So obviously, in order to find the Newfoundland, we need to know how much the Cocker Spaniel weighs. So um, let's find that first. We know it's this much, 7,000 and change, less than the 20 kilograms and change of the Springer Spaniel. So as, since we know our final answer is going to be in grams, let's convert everything all to grams, use our simplifying strategy in order to do that. So for the Cocker Spaniel, let's find him. So the 20 kilograms here on the Springer, I know that's 20,000 grams, right? 20,000, and then I have 490 grams. And I know the difference between them, so if I subtract the difference, I will get the amount of the Cocker Spaniel. So I'll subtract the 7,590. And you could see without even really doing any rounding that we're looking around 13,000-ish, right? Let's do the actual subtraction here. 0 minus 0 is 0. 9 minus 9, again 0. Here, though, in the hundreds place, we need to regroup. We see we can't take 5 from 4. So, and then we have to regroup across a 0 out to the 10 thousands place. We'll leave one of those 10 thousands. Because we haven't done this in a little while, I'm going to go through each step. Bring 1 10 thousand to the thousands place as 10 thousands but that still does not help me in the hundreds place where I need it. And so of those 10,000s, I will leave nine as they are and bring one of those thousands to the hundreds place as 10 hundreds joined with the four hundreds already present in the hundreds place is 14 hundreds from which I can now subtract five, leaving, yes, nine. And then it's easy. Nine minus seven is two. And 1 minus nothing is 1. Remember I said my rough estimate was 13,000-ish? This rounds to 13,000. Now I'm going to take a moment and right here, squeeze it in here. This is 12,900 grams is the weight of the Cocker Spaniel, so I do not confuse it myself. So the Newfoundland, we see, what we know about him is how much more he weighs than the Cocker Spaniel. So if we were to add this, the Cocker Spaniel's weight, to the how much more the Newfoundland is, we'd have the total weight of the Newfoundland, which obviously we need to solve for on our unknown D. All right, so let's do that. And you see, again, we're given this in mixed units, so let's put it together in grams. So 52 kilograms, kilo means 1,000, so that's 52,000 grams. 656 grams in all. And if we add to that the weight of the Cocker Spaniel, the that we just calculated, the 12,900 grams, that will give us our grand total for the Newfoundland's weight. Six and zero are six. Five and zero, five. Uh, six plus nine. Excellent. 15, so place that 5, regroup the 1. 1, 2, and 2 make 5, yes. Drop that comma while we're in the neighborhood. 5 plus 1 is 6. And so that's the weight of Newfoundland. 
And cute little historical note here, a Newfoundland, these big bear-like dogs, a big black Newfoundland named Seaman, uh, accompanied Lewis and Clark on their expedition. So, uh, and there's an excellent book by Roland Smith that my class is reading this year called The Captain's Dog. It's written from the perspective. So if you're into dogs, there's a great book written from the perspective that gives you a little bit of American history to boot. All right, so now we know the Newfoundland. We're trying to solve, remember our question, what's the difference in grams between the weights of the Newfoundland and the Springer Spaniel? Now I have all the information I need to calculate that. So if I take the weight of the Newfoundland, and I'm not going to clutter things up by writing it there, uh, 65,556 grams. And I'm trying to find the difference between that and the Springer, and I already converted the Springer to grams, so I have that number handy. If I subtract, I'll find the difference between them, of course. So that's 20,490 grams for the Springer. Subtracting, I'll find the difference between them, which was ultimately the question solving for D. So six minus zero, leave six, good. And, oh, yep, you see what's going on? Yep. Can't take nine from five, so go to the hundreds place, leave four of those hundreds, bring ten over as ten, bring a hundred over as ten tens, and with the five tens already there, fifteen tens minus nine tens leaves six tens, four hundreds minus four hundreds, zero, five minus zero leaves, that five, six minus two, four, great. And this is grams. And so there's my answer. And now I can just write a statement. Uh, the Newfoundland, right? And I could say the difference between the ways, but I'm going to say the Newfoundland ways. 45,066 grams more than the Springer Spaniel. So there's my statement. And we are done with number four. We got two more to go, so let's uh, hustle on over to number five. Marsha, well, Marsha, bless her little rug loving heart. Marsha has three rugs. The first rug, I guess these are all runners that you put in a hallway or something. The first rug is two meters, 87 centimeters long. The second rug has a length 98 centimeters less than the first. Third rug is 111 centimeters longer than the second rug. And so now we want to know what is the difference in centimeters between the length of the first rug and the third rug. Is this not exactly like what we just did with dogs and their weight, but we're now we're doing it with rugs and their length. So we know exactly what to do here. So uh, I'm gonna use F, S, and T for first, second, third, because I want to avoid using numbers um, to designate things because that can be confusing. So the first rug, and, and is another good one like with uh, Jose and his vase, where the tape is somewhat representative. And it's comparative here, right? This one's more than this, this one's less than that. So I'm going to draw separate rugs. Okay, so the first rug we're given straight out. It's 2 meters 87 centimeters. Second rug, let's see, we're comparing it, and it is less than the first, so call that S for second rug. And we know it's less than the first. We don't know how much the, how long the second rug is, but we do know the difference between them. And that is 98 centimeters. It's 98 centimeters less. Now the third rug is longer than the second rug. And, and I can actually tell that it's longer than the first one as well. Can I tell that? 
Yeah, because this one's 98 centimeters less, and this is 111 centimeters long. Yeah, okay. So it doesn't matter, though, how you draw it precisely, because we don't really know all that just yet. But so I'm going to draw out my third rug. And what I know here is that the third rug is 111 centimeters longer than the second. So I know the difference, so I'm going to do another dotted line here. So this here, which looks similar but is different from this amount here, is 111 centimeters. And what I'm trying to find is the difference between the length of the first and the third rugs. So that's the difference between this rug here, the first rug, and the third rug. And I could do two more dotted lines here, but I'm afraid it's going to muddle things up. So I will just simply draw my bracket. This is what I'm trying to find, and I'll, I'll call it R for rugs. Why not? Okay, so that's what I'm trying to find right there. So in order to do so, obviously, and, and there are a couple ways to go about this. There's a faster method, but we'll, we'll do it the sensible way. Um, if I, I know the first rug, I can find the second rug. If I know the second rug, I can find the third rug. And once I have all that information, I can find the difference between the first and third rugs. So let's solve for the second rug. And since I'm giving my answer in the simplest unit, the smallest unit present here in centimeters, I'll just work in centimeters. So I'll take that first rug length, and if I subtract from it the difference, I will find the second rug length. So two meters... Now stop and think, we've been dealing a lot with thousands here, but you picture that meter stick has 100 centimeters. So one meter is 100 centimeters, two meters is 200 centimeters. Okay, so 287 centimeters is the first rug. Do we see that? Okay, because the two meters is 200 centimeters. And if I subtract from it the difference there, that 98 centimeters, I will find the length of the second rug. And if you want to do this kind of quickly, you could do minus 100 and adjust by the 2. Okay, just you mental mathematicians, throw that out for you. But we'll do it the long, difficult way just for fun. Hey, all right, so I can't take 8 from 7, so I'll go to 10's place and leave 7 10's. Bring 1 10 over as 10 ones with the seven ones already in the ones place is now 17 ones minus eight ones leaving nine ones and now I can look at this as 27 minus nine and if you know your nine facts you'd know that's 18 just like that um, or we could do the regrouping and say well we'll leave 100 bring 100 over as 10 tens which is then 17 minus nine is eight and one minus nothing is one. See, 18, just like I said. So 189 centimeters then, that's our length here of the second rug, 189 centimeters. So to find the third rug, we know it's 111 centimeters longer than the second rug. So if I take this amount of the second rug and add to it the 111, I will get the third rug. So let me do that. I could just append it onto that existing equation, but I'm going to rewrite it down here so I have room to regroup, plus 111 centimeters, and this will give me the length of the third rug. So a 9 and 1 make 10, and I can see this as 2 and 8 also make 10, and 1, 1, and 1, 3, wonderful, and that's centimeters. So now I know the length of the whole third rug, which I'm going to, even though it risks getting cluttered here, I'm going to make a bracket and note that that is 300 centimeters. So because now I see, okay, I'm trying to find the difference between these two. So if I take the third rug, the 300 centimeters, and subtract from it, the first rug, which I already converted to centimeters, is 287, right there, centimeters. All right, and I subtract them, I will find the difference between them. Now, you could do all the regrouping here. You might be able to look at this and do the mental math and say, oh, 87 and 13 make 100. So the difference here is 13. Do you see that? Do you, do you, do you? Okay, well, uh, if not, let's do the regrouping. 
All right, so I can't subtract there. It will leave 200s, bring it over as 10 tens, which I need to use one of those, so leave nine tens. Bring it over as 10 ones. 10 minus seven is three. Nine minus eight is one. And okay, two minus two leaves zero. So just as I said, 13. The, the faster way to do this, by the way, is, is noting that uh, the difference between these two rugs compared to the first rug, do you see that? I don't want to confuse anyone, but we could have done this in a much simpler way, uh, that this one's 98 centimeters less and this one's 111 longer, so that we could see quite easily the difference between the two. Um, but we'll leave it there for now and just write our statement. The difference in centimeters. Okay, so the, the, uh, we'll write it this way as we did with the dogs. The third rug And we do know it's longer, right? It's 300 compared to 287. Uh, and so is 13 centimeters longer than the first rug. Okay, and we are rocking and rolling here. Let's jump on to number six and finish out some homework time, huh? Who are you calling a sap? Well, we have barrels of sap here, which of course we're talking about maple sap. We're making scrumptious sugar-laden maple syrup. So one barrel held 60 liters, 868 milliliters of sap. A second barrel held 20,089 milliliters more sap than the first. A third barrel held 40 liters, 82 milliliters less sap than the second. If the sap from the three barrels was poured into a larger container, how much sap would there be in all? Okay, so we know we're doing a comparative here, so we're going to have uh, three tapes. I'm going to use FST again for first, second, third. So our first barrel, we draw out. Hello. It's a long slender barrel, isn't it? And this one we know the exact. It's not comparative. So the whole thing is 60 liters, 868 milliliters. And we're measuring capacity here. How much can it hold, right? Now the second barrel we see is more than the first. And we don't know how much it is, but we know how much more it is. So second barrel, here we go, is going to be more than the first. And what we know is the difference between them, right? And I could draw this on top or bottom side of this bracket. Sometimes I do it on the bottom, you know, all like that. Uh, this is 20,089 milliliters more than the first one, right? Okay, so now this third barrel holds less than the second, all right, and significantly less, right? We're just kind of looking at, working at 60 and then 20 more and then 40 less than that. We can see the third barrel is going to be less than the first barrel even, right? Okay, so let's draw a third barrel. And what we know, again, is the difference. We know how much less it is than the second. So we know this here. This is 40 liters, 82 milliliters. And now we're looking at all the sap together, all three barrels. So we can draw one big stinking bracket over the whole thing here. And we'll call it S for sap. So in order to find the grand total, right, we need to know the amounts of each. We do know the first. We know the second is this much more. So let's begin by solving for the second. And uh, I'd like to put everything in milliliters. Use that simplifying strategy. Um, I think I'm just more comfortable that way. So 60 liters, when we're talking about milliliters, it's a 1 to 1,000 conversion here. So 60 liters would be 60,000 milliliters. So if we take 60,000, and then we have 868 
milliliters and add to it how much more the second barrel is, that 20,089 milliliters, then we'll have the amount of the second barrel. So let's do that. 8 plus 9 is 17, places 7, regroup the 1. 1 and 6 are 7, 7 and 8 are 15, good, place the 5, regroup the 1. 1 and 8 and 0, 9. 0 and 0, of course, there's 0, drop that comma. 6 and 2 are 8. Remember my very rough, I said it's about 60, it's about 80, this is about 40. You can see that it's bearing true. So now we have the amount of the second barrel, 80,957 milliliters. Now the third barrel is 40 liters, 82 milliliters less than the second. And I purposely, uh, I should have told you before maybe, but I left a little space here so I can just continuously go on using this number right here. So if I subtract the difference, I will find the amount of the third barrel. So I could take away 40,000, right? 40 liters is 40,000 milliliters. And note that it's 82 milliliters. So how many hundreds? No hundreds, right? 82 milliliters. And this will give me the amount of the third barrel. So 7 minus 2, 5. Okay, can't take 8 from 5, go to 100's place, leave 8 of them there. Bring one of those uh, 100's over as 10 10's with the 5 10's already present. 15 10's minus 8 10's leaves 7 10's. 8 minus 0, 8. And this, I can actually be a little chintzy here and say, oh, 80 minus 40 is 40, right? I mean, you could do 0 minus 0 is 0. Drop the comma, 8 minus 4. All right, great. And you see again with my rough estimate proving true. 60 and 20 are 80. 80 minus 40 is 40. But now our grand question is to put all three barrels together. And we want to do so carefully, make sure we get this right. So we'll do it in column addition and just add all three at once. Um, so you could do this in two steps if, if you find doing big column addition uh, confusing or just more difficult than it's worth. So I'm going to write them all in milliliters. So that first barrel, I've already converted all to milliliters. I know it's 60,868 milliliters. The second barrel we calculated here, right? This number, the 80,957 milliliters. And then the third barrel, see, I calculated here. That's our last one, right? That is 40,000. 875 milliliters, and I'm adding all three barrels together to get a grand total. Let's do it. 8 and 7 are 15, and 5 more make 20. And note that we are regrouping a 2 here. Sometimes you automatically put a 1 because it's often a 1, but it's a 2 because it's 20. 2 and 6 make 8. 8 and 5 Got that? 13. Seven more. Again, make 20. I place the zero, and again, I have a two to regroup. Two and eight are 10. Nine more make yeah, 19. So now this is a little trick you're doing in your head. 19 plus eight. 19 plus eight. Got it? 27. Place the seven, regroup that two. Ah, uh, gets a little easier now. 2 and 0 and 0 and 0 are 2. Drop the comma. 6. Oh, I, can, I see a pattern here. Let me do the 6 and 4 are 10. And 8 more is 18. How's that? Now, we're over 100, well over 100,000 here. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, 60, 80, and 40 are definitely going to be over 100. Okay. And this is milliliters. Now, it didn't specify what terms to put the answer in, but since the whole barrel we were given was in mixed units, liters and milliliters, that's how we'll give our answer. So how many thousands are there? Yes, there are 182 thousands. So that would be 182 liters with 700 milliliters. 
So all, we we'll write our statement now, all three barrels would hold 182 liters, 700 milliliters of sap, or whatever you chose to put in them. Beautiful! Whoa! You did it! Woo! What a homework time! So not only are you done with homework time, you're done with module two. Congratulations. God bless on the test. And see you next time. It is homework time.